solid. He uh, looked at one stage yesterday like he might be eliminated, but turned it round with a couple of late wins. Got all the way to the final, just fell short. It's Leicester's Ben Wollaston to get us underway then in frame one. He's the world number 33, 30 years of age. And uh, Chester's Ricky Walden, 35 years of age. He's ranked 23 in the world. He's a three-time ranking event winner. All in China. Some big tournaments he's won out there, particularly the International Championship, which at the time was worth 125,000 to the winner. Wollaston's best run in a ranking event runner-up Welsh Open three years ago. Full-blooded attempt from Ben Wollaston. Got the double kiss, which has left Walden in here. Black at the moment is covered. Pink doesn't look like it pots, but can go down for the blue and try and develop things from there. Yeah, fell agonisingly short, didn't he? Got to the final last night, but uh, Mark Williams beat him 3-1, so has to start again. But, of course, most tournaments you lose, that's it, you're out, at least chance to earn more money and get in the playoffs tomorrow night maybe try and get in that winners group just two places left now in that winners group well I think the blue still pots so uh, that little kiss off the red actually has worked out nicely as I say black and pink at the moment not potable so he's going to have to for now concentrate on the blue and just try and clear some of those reds away. The only problem with that is the cue ball's having to travel, so there's more chance of things going wrong positionally the further the cue ball has to travel. Well, it's become even more complicated now. The blue's gone back on its spot, so having to take the yellow. No. In the first frame of his first match in Group 5, he made a 140 break, Ricky Walden. Well, they actually lost that match. And he's missed that. That's just saying it's, it just makes it harder work the more the cue ball has to travel, and it he didn't have any of the three big colours to go at. So playing down for bulk colours, and he's ended up missing the red.
So after that brief safety exchange, another chance at a long red here for Ricky Walden. And then it goes. Oh, we'd love to split the blue here. Well, having said that, one full ball cannon to the red means uh, he's in complete no man's land. The only colour he can actually see is the pink, but uh, I suspect he's going to come off the cushion for one of the bulk colours. Yellow or brown, he's nominated actually. Coming off two cushions then. <coughs> Just one of those frames where pink and black, and in fact the blue for a while there was just out of commission, so which made scoring difficult. We saw Walden was in early, but made just nine and then potted that red but didn't land on a colour at least these two have got the run of these tables after two uh, days here already in group five yeah Mark Williams the winner last night so he joins Xu Yu Long, Mark Selby, Karen Wilson, Ali Carter so four of the first five players into the winners group all top 16 players Well, the question is, can Williston see the potting angle of the red just off the green spot? Very scrappy table. Looks like he can see this red to pot it. Yep, so Williston pots his first ball of this match. It's not far to travel, Ben. He lives in Leicester. We've already seen, of course, Selby and Tom Ford from that part of the world in this year's Championship League. Wollaston just a few years younger than them, but was uh, part of that thriving junior scene based largely at Willie Thorns in Leicester, which was a central hub for junior competitions weekend after weekend, thanks to Willie's brother, Malcolm Thorne, who gave so much to the junior game, sadly passed away a few years ago now. Well, much easier now that the black is free. So, a real scoring opportunity for Williston here. Right. 
as I say, Wollaston scored very heavily in Group 5. There were 20 centuries, which is above average for a single group. He made five of them, so he made a quarter of them himself. Twenty-five. Twenty-five points in front. The pink is freed with Williston potting this red. That was Walden's problem when he was in first. These big colours, all three of them actually, black, pink and blue, were all tied up. So it was very hard to put anything together. But uh, no such worries for Wollaston. He's nicely in here with a good chance to win this opening frame now. Meanwhile, the, the debutant, Lee Hang, has made a great start. Of course, he beat Michael White 3-0. He's leading Judd Trump 2-0 on table one. He's had two centuries. So Lee Hang, a late call-up because of various withdrawals, really making the most of this opportunity to play in the Championship League. It really hit the ground running in Coventry today. 43. Well, a slight look of amusement, which suggests he can't get through to the red closest to the pocket, which is the one he's played on. Looks like the other one's in the way, and if that's the case, this could be end of break. He's having a good look, but that looks like a mistake from Ben Williston. Just as he was getting himself into a position where he looked like he might wrap the frame up. It's 39 in front, there's still 67 on. It's to his advantage that there are a couple of safe reds on cushions, but even so, that was a chance to close out this opening frame. And we're only talking a few centimetres, that's all that's made the difference there, but it's made a difference, that's the point. Well, Wollaston will be disappointed there because that was, uh, as I say, a, a chance. Gonna have to wait for another one. Well, that helps Walden. Apart from the fact he's left the red on, I was going to say bringing the red out helps him because he's going to need it. But the fact the red stayed near the, the pocket, not so much. So he may, may not benefit from the fact he's brought the red off. Ooh, well, he got very close to that middle. One. And it's finished well. He's been a little fortunate there, really. <coughs> Pink will put him 46 in front. Another red and a big colour. Walden needs a snooker, but uh, he's got the rest out for this. The pink's not guaranteed by any means. So this black, and it'll be 54 in front with 51 on, and just take the extra red on the cushion as well. Should be 1-0 Ben Williston. Wow, he's missed the black. Can't believe that. That was frame ball. Ben Williston, eight. That is a big surprise. Blocked the pocket, but he'd rather it had gone in the pocket.
Well, even if Williston does go on to win this frame, it's uh, a concern if he's missing Black's off spots, particularly if they're a frame ball. Whether he just took it slightly for granted, I'm not sure, but uh, bottom line is he didn't pot it. Well, Wollaston only needs one red, so may well take this on to the yellow pocket. Obviously, there's no way of knowing where it would finish, where to miss it, but the other reds are not nicely placed for Ricky Walden. So, it's surely worth taking this on. Well, I said he didn't know where it would finish, but look where it has finished. So, with the black over the pocket, this is a chance for Walden. As I say, the other two reds not out in the open, but both still possible. And this black back on its spot just may have slightly hampered. Well, no, he's all right, actually. You can get the queue through. Just thought for a moment he might be uh, hampered queuing. No. So, a couple of key shots coming up. Firstly, getting on this slash red. The green, obviously, awkward as well. That's in Williston's favour. going to need at least a brown from the red. 60. Be 30 behind with the red, so we'll need at least a brown. Yellow and green, no good to him. Got the blue to the middle, though. So then it becomes about yellow to green. Oh, great pot. Still got to get on this blue, though. Doesn't have the, the natural angle from the brown to do that. Uh, 
and that was the problem trying to obtain position the brown was missable and he's missed it and it's all that Wollaston needs to secure the frame Wollaston of course missed frame ball black earlier but he's got another bite at the cherry here disappointed for Walden after such a good green but didn't get ideal on the brown to get to the blue but it's not over yet or is it or is it well, he nearly fluked it, so Ben Wollaston has had two attempts at frame ball in this frame and has missed them both. And worse still for him, he's left the brown on. So Walden, after all that, needs pink and black to really steal this frame. He knows he could have lost it. But that's not his problem, that's Ben Wollaston's problem. The black was the ball, really, for Wollaston. It was just a, a straightforward pot for him. For whatever reason, he missed it. Maybe took his eye off it, took it for granted, whatever. But it's cost him, because Walden now needs this black, and he's 1-0 up. And in it goes. So Ricky Walden steals the opening frame. Came so close close to losing it, but he leads Ben Wollaston 1-0. Now Lee Hang, the debutant, going great guns already, having beaten Michael White 3-0. He's 2-0 up on Judd Trump. Lee Hang's had two centuries already in the five frames he's won. Completely new into Championship League, but as I say, he's hit the ground running. Seems to be enjoying his time here so far. Trump topped... Uh, the league table in Group 5, but then lost in the semi-finals to Ricky Walden. Rather cagey frame in operation there. Just nine points in it, Lee Hang leading. Trump's third group in a row. He also lost in the semis in Group 4 to Ali Carter. So that's table one, but uh, right here on table two, Ricky Walden, having won that black ball frame, he's leading Ben Wollaston 1-0. I saw Ricky Walden after the final last night. He did look rather tired, but he's had a good night's sleep, and he's a great pro, bottom line. Happy, I'm sure, to have another two-day snooker here. He's in Berlin next week at the German Masters. He's qualified, as has Ben Wollaston. In fact, Wollaston will be playing to Trump in the first round there. Slightly different atmosphere at the Tempodrome, which uh, holds around 2,000 people. Obviously, there's no audience here at all in Coventry. Really important phase of the season, though, with uh, a lot of snooker to be played in the next few months, leading into the World Championship, of course, in April and May where uh, all eyes turn to the Crucible. That's, of course, if you qualify. These two at the moment outside the top 16, so we'll each have to win three matches to get there.
so a rather cagey start to this second frame. Referee Greg Caniglo has called the miss, so he's, uh, Wollaston has taken that, and the white goes back. The danger here now is he overcompensates and hits it too hard. And if he does that, he could push it on as a, as a pot, so... It's a very slight adjustment required by Walden. And he's made that adjustment. Didn't quite get close, uh, tight up to the red, which has left a chance at that pot. And Ben Wollaston finally knocks in the first red of the frame. And is he going to land on the green? Oh, wow. It's incredible to land there. I mean, that's unlucky, really. On nothing at all. <laughs> all the places he could have finished. And he's finished on top of that red and not on a colour. It's a game where you need a lot of patience, Snooker. Because things like that can be so annoying. It's probably a good red, but got no reward for it. Yellow ball.
Walden coming round to see if he's covered the red to the left corner. That's the one to the left of the black. Looks like he has done. There is still one though that, uh, that does cut here, but Mulliston not interested. This is a very cagey start to this frame. Just one red potted. You can just see the respect they have for one another, and indeed the respect they have for under quid, which is uh, what they're playing for in this frame, of course, as in every frame in the round robin stage. But, uh, you know, they're professionals and they are playing match snooker. That's a mistake. It's caught the red on the side cushion. Nothing dead easy for Wollaston to go out here. There's a couple of reds that I think do pop though. It's the one just above the black to the right corner. So Ben Wollaston in, in frame two, and unlike the first red he potted, he's on a colour this time. So far, so good. And although there are a few reds awkward, he's not going to need them as long as he carries on taking high value colours.
Back's going to put him 53 in front. This is where it starts to get a little more difficult, though. Those reds, not exactly out in the open, really. Still going to need a couple of them with colours. No dear. So just see who's going along nicely. He breaks down on 48. Remember Ben Wollaston in the first frame twice missed frame ball. He missed a black and then a brown. He leads by 53, but there's still seven reds on here. OK, they're in awkward positions, most of them, but Walden at least gets a chance to start to peg back this lead. Well, he had a chance, but it went wrong very quickly. Missed the blue. Well, what? And so a 52-point lead where the bulls are is uh, good for Wollaston. The 75 on, but they're all very awkward now. Been a tough old frame, this. Walden will be very annoyed to miss that blue. Well, there's all sorts of noise going on in the background. I'm not quite sure what it is, but I could do without it. in Walden's interest to try and get things opened up but of course he doesn't want to do that at the expense of gifting Wollaston the chance he needs to win the frame and that's not good for Walden he's left a chance at this red Wollaston 52 in front still not straightforward from here but 
He's in the driving seat just by virtue of the fact he's got a good lead. He needs another red. Yeah, there's some noise just... I don't know, it's coming from somewhere in the Rico, which is not helping. So, 60 in front. If he pots the red, Walden needs a snooker. Of course, we've been here before, though, frame ball, and he missed an easier one than this in the previous frame. <laughs> well, I don't know what the... I don't know who that is, but surely the ref needs to go and find out, or someone needs to do something here. Because it's putting the players off. So someone needs to sort this out. Well, I think they're going to stop playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it looks like the referee is. Uh, Well, if he does it again, we'll stop, yeah. I thought he was going to go and sort it out, but uh, for now, the noise has stopped. And uh, that's back again. Right, OK. It's going to keep coming on. Huh? The ref needs to go and say something to somebody, otherwise we're going to have this problem continuing. Off he goes. So play suspended for now. Noise is off. He's come at a pretty vital stage. Wollaston, as I say, is on frame ball. Just a reminder, we've had uh, three results so far. Lee Hang has won 3-0 against both Michael White and Joe Trump. And Graham Dot has beaten Martin Gould 3-1. By the way, uh, the noises yeah, that we heard oh yeah. included some yeah. swearing. So obviously, case, if you heard any of that and were offended by it, we apologise. I'm not quite sure exactly what it is. It was someone nearby yeah. or something bleeding through. But uh, the referee's now gone to sort it out. So hopefully, that's the end of it. Well, clearly it's not been sorted out because we can hear it again. This is a bit of a shambles, really. Someone needs to do something here to stop this. The the, the venue, really, it's up to them because the arena is supposed to be quiet. There shouldn't be any of these noises. Yeah, it sounds like a radio, doesn't it? We can hear sound coming through here, and it's someone effing and jeffing. Paul Carley, the tournament director, said he's going to get on to the venue, yeah, yeah. the we Rico. Stop in case it was someone round here, go and get in trouble. Okay. Try and sort out exactly what's happening. In the meantime, there's a match to play, and there's a ball to pot, and if he pots it, Ben Wollaston, then uh, it should be one each. He's done well there, considering all of that, Nine. he's done well. And Ricky Walden has seen enough here. Nine. And has conceded a tough old frame, that over half an hour, interrupted <laughs> by, uh, as I say, a few noises we shouldn't have heard. But anyway, Ben Wollaston has levelled up. We're all square at one each. So rather bizarre and surreal end to the frame, but... Uh, Anyway, Wollaston doesn't care now, he's won it, and 
it's all square here. Wollaston uh, is going to stay on this table to play Martin Gould and then Judd Trump tonight. Walden also plays Trump and also has a match against Gould today. Greg Coniglio setting them up for frame three. So just waiting for Ricky Walden to return and we will uh, get the third frame underway. Let's be interested to see if the pace picks up a bit. That last frame was pretty uh, hard going really. So Ben Wollaston won that lengthy second frame. We're all square at one each as he breaks off in the third here. long red from Walden Red wriggled in. This is the thing with snooker, though. You know, no two frames are the same. You can have a half-hour grind. You could have one ten minutes with a big break. You just get such a variance. And in fairness, it's Championship League. The quality has been very high. As I say, we had 20 centuries in Group Five.
Twenty one. Ricky Walden who stole the opening frame didn't get much of a look in in the second but is in first in the third good long red good couple of loose reds still to go at so didn't have to go into them here can play for the red to the right corner but has elected to try and develop a few more and that's worked out quite nicely I think some players will go in earlier than others Judd Trump is always trying to get them open as quickly as he can other players prefer to, to pick them off doesn't look good again trying to open things up but it's just lost position and he's got to be careful here that red near the uh, left the right middle he may just play the cue ball to the top cushion instead <coughs> trying to risk playing to bulk and leaving that on As I say, with that red near the right middle, couldn't really afford to take the white down the other end of the table. So the break ends at 36, and uh, he was being positive. He was trying to open things up, but just lost position on a colour.
Well, we're back to all the cagey stuff again. Been plenty of it in this match. But as I say, it underlines the respect Leach have for the other. Well, I'm not sure about that one. That was pushing the boat out a bit. And Walden comes back to the table 36 points in front. It's one good pot, really, and he's away again with a chance to lead 2-1. He's a tall lad, Ricky, which is... Uh, an advantage, I think, but even so, it's a bit of a stretch. It's slightly awkward queuing. Well, he's now uh, looking at this one instead. Still awkward. <laughs> he's got the rest out. He's going to have an extension on his queue. Nicely done, though. Oh, not again. It's happened so many times in this match where the player's potted something and just finished handcuffed to a red. Just needed to be on a colour there. That was a chance, and he's left a red to the same right middle pocket. So Walden 37 in front. Yesterday, some of the frames he was winning, he was really buzzing around the table, not studying things too much, just playing his natural game, and I think that is his best game. One. So here, this is a good chance, he knows that, doesn't need to overcomplicate things. The danger sometimes in this game is you can spend too long looking for problems and you can guarantee if you look long enough you'll find them.
just a question of whether this pink actually goes on its own spot. Just about. Well, this is a key shot now. He pots this red, you fancy him winning this frame. Nicely done. Six. Blue to lead by 58, so red and a colour, and it's snookers required by Ben Williston. Been a bit of a slog these first three frames, but Walden has uh, played a good frame here. Just checking that scoreboard, but that's the situation. Red and a colour needed. Thirty-five. He's done enough. Ricky Walden then dominates frame three and for the second time in this match is in front by the odd frame. He leads Ben Wollaston 2-1. When they played in Group 5, Walden won 3-2. It's been a, a little bit bitty, the match, a bit disjointed. But sometimes, you know, balls can go awkward and frames can just transpire that way. It's been good safety played and clearly both players giving absolutely everything, trying so hard. Wollaston's got to try and dig in and force a decider. Walden would like obviously to close it out here in frame four. Get his first point on the board in group six. All matches first to three in the round robin, as indeed they are when we go to knockout. So it's Ricky Walden to frame get four. frame four and away. He needs one more frame to win this match. Great length on the safety by Williston.
one. And the safety has opened up this scoring chance for Ben Wollaston. Somewhat uniquely, he's married to a referee, Tatiana, Six. his wife. They met, uh, I think it was the Paul Hunter Classic a few years back. They have two children together. She referees on the circuit, although obviously <laughs> she's not allowed to referee his matches, or indeed the section of the draw is in until such time as he's eliminated. So it's always a question of which of the Wollastons will go the furthest in a tournament. So, decision time now. Does he take the blue on? If he does and misses, Seven. potentially it's end of match. If he pots it, could be a decider. It looks like he's taking it on. And what I like about that is he didn't make a meal of that. He just got down and knocked it in. He didn't fret about it or hesitate at all. Which is a good sign, I think. It's so important to think positively in this sport because there are <laughs> so many things that can go wrong. But he uh, accentuated the positive there and it really worked for him. 30. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Well going to be the little tick up to the grease. Disappointing really to make just 24 there. Most 
Well, first glance from Walden's point of view, that looks OK. I don't think he's left anything on. Well, the key part of that shot was getting the white back, which he's done, but I think he's left this red to the left middle. It's a very uh, attacking safety shot, that. But it's all about Wollaston taking advantage from this chance. Well, it could have done without that. Just look where the white's finished. You know, it was a great chance that was to get in and make it two each. Gone wrong first shot. playing to this cluster here round by the black.
these pots to the middles are not easy. I'm assuming he's taking it on. But he's in. Well, Wollaston's been in a couple of times and just couldn't really keep control of the cue ball. And also, he was taking a few balls on, but not really committing to them. He was playing safe as well, and we'll see if he's going to be punished now. I think Walden has probably played the more open game of the two. Oh, he's been unlucky here, though. Unless he can get through to the red by the pocket. Three. In that sort of match, though, they're getting little nudges and touches that are not conducive to open attack in snooker, but I think he can see this red. Four. Ricky Walden, 23rd in the world rankings, just outside the top 16, trying to get back in. Slipped out over a year ago. Top 16 is interesting, some players to get in and bed themselves and you think they'll never drop out but when they do drop out it's so hard to get back in again because there's so many players now it must be 25 30 players maybe with claims to be in the top 16 and basically you've got to win a tournament it seems to get yourself in there so Well, there's a couple of reds lying awkwardly. He was going to make the clearance, he's got to deal with them. <coughs> Tried to free the red around the black there, but that's not worked. He's lost position. Again, he's played the attacking shot, but it's not worked. Nice. He can bring this red off the side cushion maybe here, get that into play. Six points in the frame.
Well, Walden may well have a go at this red to the right corner. Not easy, but it's another chance to get in. As I say, he's been probably the more positive of the two overall. But he's missed it. Now the yellow, is it? I think he's in the way here of the pot. That could have been two each there if that yellow hadn't run in front of the red. Hold on, this is going in the middle. Wow. And the white hangs on as well. <laughs> That's a double whammy for Wollaston. It's been very, very scrappy, let's be honest, this match. All just bits and pieces, no r real flow to it. Well, that's a great shot. He's got him bang in trouble here. Snooker on all four reds. Trouble this because even if he hits a red, of course, he could well lead one on, leave one on. Let's see, he's hit it and he has left a chance. It's one red on the right hand side cushion, which could come to his aid. Wollaston sits down looking uh, a little bit frustrated as Walden lines this red up. One. Well, as I say, that red on the cushion now is key. Eight. 
8. So that pink puts Walden six points in front. Coming now to the real meat of this frame. Well, it's Mr. Red. Thank you, Walden. 40. So this frame very much in the balance. What's he done here? He's been fortunate if he's covered that with the pink. Was not a good shot, but he's been lucky, I think. Nicely done. Yet again, though, good ball potted, but nothing really from it. Can put Wollaston in trouble here, though. Try and force him to move this safe red. And Wollaston's the man under pressure, because, of course, if he loses the frame, then the match is over. He's lost the match. It's going to go back, I think.
touching ball. Well, I just got there, third time of asking. Because touching ball means Walden can play away and try and put him in more trouble. Well, again, close, but getting close, uh, he's not good enough. He's going to be going back again. You can see the before. Bang on that from the referee. Well, slight adjustment, but it looks it looks good from there. These foul points are mounting up a bit as well. You know, there's 23 points in it now. So close. <coughs> if he misses twice more, he can only tie. So this is getting serious now. At the moment, Walden only needs that red. That's the other danger. If he were to chip it off the cushion and leave it on, then it's effectively match over. So Wollaston right in the mire here. on with pace and hoping for the best he needs to be lucky <coughs> he's not been lucky as I say Walden just needs the red I think a little bit of frustration took hold there Wollaston uh, called for three misses just hit it with pace and hope for the best but if Walden knocks the red in then it's snooker's required <coughs> and in it goes Wollaston looking a bit One. deflated So Ricky Walden is going to take the point. It was hard-fought stuff. The match, best part of two hours. 
seven. In a league format, these sort of matches don't do the players a lot of good because you do need mental energy and got very bogged down. Just one of those matches. Can't fault the uh, professionalism of the two players. They played hard match snooker, but Ricky Walden delighted to get the win. He has a bit of a break until he plays Judd Trump. Wollaston basically straight back on, though, against Martin Gould. 12. So that's the end of that. There's the handshake. Not a great game of snooker, it's got to be said, but Ricky Walden delighted.